Hey guys, Ryan here, and in this video I'm going to be covering how to install and use Winget, which is the Windows Package Manager. So unlike Linux, which traditionally uses a package manager to install and remove software, or packages if you like, from a system, Windows traditionally has relied on third parties to create their own installation packages. Now of course the downside of this is that anything installed on Windows is going to be foreign to the operating system. In other words, if you install a piece of software and then update Windows, only the operating system will be updated and the responsibility is left to the end user to keep the installed software up to date. However, with the introduction of Winget and a repository hosted by Microsoft as well as others, it's now possible to update and remove software from a system using the equivalent of terminal commands typically found and used in Linux. This means it's now possible to update all installed software on Windows with a single command. Now Winget itself is completely open source and it's hosted on GitHub. So the first step is to install GitHub onto your system. Now, assuming that you're running Windows 11 or at least the last two releases of Windows 10, then you really don't need to do anything, as you'll find that Winget will already be pre-installed as part of the app installer. However, if you find that that's not installed on your system, then just simply install it from the Microsoft Store. So step two is using Winget to install and remove applications. So Winget is exclusively command line based and can be called using either CMD or PowerShell. For example, to launch Winget, all you need to do is type in Winget and then press enter. Now this will display a list of all the commands that Winget understands. For example, to install Firefox on my system, I would run the command winget install mozilla.firefox and press enter. Now normally you would get a UAC prompt to confirm that and depending on the application you're installing, you might get some additional dialog windows appearing. But once the process is finished, as you can see, Firefox is now installed on your system. Now alternatively to uninstall Firefox, you would use this command which is winget uninstall Firefox. Once again, you'll probably notice there'll be a UAC prompt and in this case a couple of additional dialog boxes. I'm just going to click through these. And then once the process is finished, Firefox has now been removed from your system. So to produce a list of all the installed packages or applications on a system, you can use the following command which is winget list. Now this will return a list of software installed on your system and if any of the items have Winget set up as the source, then it's something that can be updated using Winget. It'll also list the current version that you've got installed, and whether or not there's an update version that can be installed at the top of it. So in order to update all software supported by Winget, you would type the following, which is Winget upgrade space dash dash and then all. In my particular case, I'm all up to date. Now one thing just to note, it will skip updating any applications that are currently running, so make sure that you have got everything closed down before you run that particular command. So step 4 is a GUI interface for Winget. I mentioned before that Winget is 100% command line based, so you might be wondering, is there any form of GUI front end available? Now, the nearest thing that I found was a website called WinInstall, and this takes keeps track of all the software supported by Winget, and also provides you with the command to install the set software. For example, if I wanted to install OBS, I would navigate to the page, find the Winget command here, and then copy and paste that into either CMD or PowerShell. Now the website also allows you to create some scripts to bulk install software in a comparable manner to a service such as Ninite. In conclusion, Winget is a great solution for end users that want a safe and quick method of keeping software up to date on their installation of Windows 10 or 11. Thank you very much for watching guys, and if you did find this video helpful, then please consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for more content like this in the future. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.